All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this is gonna be fun. So I got a, an article here about Joe Rogan that uh, is the next, the next moment of attack for Rogan. They're gonna get him. They're gonna get him with brilliant stuff like this, you guys. Like this is how they're gonna get him off the air with brilliant articles like this written by CNN. And they compared Joe Rogan's use of the N word to January 6th. You heard that right. They compared it to January 6th. That is, that is the article that I'm going to read for you right now. And we're going to do that because I've decided that unless they actually cancel Joe Rogan, unless they actually get him off the UFC, you know, like I'm just going to treat this as entertainment because it's so patently absurd that I'm just going to treat it as content. Like this is just, they're just helping me with content. Okay. So we're going to read this together. And uh, if you enjoy yourself, then like the video, share it, comment, subscribe to the channel, etc. This one's going to be good, dude. So, uh, so this original article was headlined why Joe Rogan's use of the N word is as bad as January 6th, something like that. And then they took so much flack in the media that they changed it. And now it is why shrugging off Joe Rogan's use of the N word is so dangerous. Oh my God. Terrifying. If you shrug it off, the fact that he read some rap lyrics, then, oh my God, it is dangerous. Fair warning, I recorded this video already and uh, I failed to switch plugs and so my audio didn't get captured, which was infuriating because I actually captured the first time I had re read this. Like I, I hadn't read it yet and I did the video reading it for the first time and so you got to actually see my genuine reactions to what I now already know is coming in the article. And let me tell you, there is some lunacy in here. All right. So uh, the podcaster Joe Rogan did not join a mob that forced lawmakers to flee for their lives, like January 6th, obviously. Uh, he never carried a Confederate flag inside the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. No one died trying to stop him from using the N-word. Right. So then if you were going to do an article comparing this to January 6th, you'd just be a complete fucking idiot, right? Like you just, that's what you said. Because you said none of those things happened. So if you compare Joe Rogan's use of the N-word to January 6th, that would make you an absolute moron with absolutely no credibility, right? Right, let's continue. Uh, but what Rogan and those that defend him have done since the video clips of him using the N-word surfaced on social media is arguably just as dangerous as what a mob did when they stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th last year. Okay, so let's stop for a second. So just so we're clear, Joe Rogan never called anyone any N-words. Joe Rogan said the N-word while discussing the N-word or in some cases was reading rap lyrics, right? Like that's, that's how he used it. So the idea that him saying that word out loud is somehow some huge affront to American racism is ludicrous, right? Like we've agreed you're not allowed to say that now. Okay, fine. But we're going to take eight year old clips and then pretend like Joe Rogan was doing something racist. Seems a little dishonest. And I think you know that, but to say that it's like January 6th, let's just recap what you also said was like January 6th. Cause here's the thing. If you make dishonest comparisons, we're not going to forget. Like, I remember what you said. I remember exactly what you said. I remember when you said January 6th was like 9-11. And I remember when you said it was like Pearl Harbor, right? So if January 6th is like 9-11, then Joe Rogan reading rap lyrics is also like 9-11, which means you are a fucking idiot, right? If those two things seemed similar to you, Joe Rogan reading the N-word in rap lyrics and 9-11 where 3,000 Americans were murdered, then you're a fucking idiot, okay? Like, your credibility is non-existent now. But let's continue reading your fucking genius article. Uh, Rogan breached a civil norm that has held America together since World War II. It's an unspoken agreement that we would never return to the kind of country we used to be. A white person would never be able to publicly use the N-word again and not pay a price. Damn. Now, does anybody notice anything, uh, anything suspect about that comment, right? Because we keep invoking these big images January 6th, 9-11, World War II, World War II, he said, America together since World War II. So white people using the N-word any time after 1945 was punishable by severe consequences. I feel like someone needs a history lesson, you know, I really do, because I feel like people use the N-word frequently after uh, World War II and had no repercussions because we lived in a severely racist country then. Like 1950s, you think that wasn't a, a time that was rife with disgusting American racism? 
Like if I need to teach you about the history of the country and I need to teach you when racism actually started turning the corner in America, then that means your credibility is non-existent, which is going to be a consistent theme of this fucking article because this person is an absolute fucking moron. Um, Rogan has so far paid no steep professional price for using a racial slur that's been called the nuclear bomb of racial epithets. Okay, Joe Rogan didn't use it as a racial slur, for the record. Again, didn't use it as a racial slur. Uh, it may even boost his career. That's what some say happened to another white entertainer who was recently caught using the word. So the first time I read this, I didn't know who they were talking about. Uh, I still actually don't. I, I read the person's name. He's a country person. I still don't know who he is. It is a sign of how desensitized we become to the rising levels of violence, rhetorical and physical, in our country that Rogan's slurs were largely treated as the latest racial outrage of the week. Who was outraged? Who was outraged? Who was outraged? Name one person who has ever watched a, a, a full episode of Joe Rogan's podcast, much less someone who actually knows him, who was outraged by that video. Oh, none? Right, zero. So the only people who are outraged are people who are not actually outraged and want Joe Rogan off the air because his podcast is literally deep dicking them in the, in the ratings. Like, CNN, as an example, like CNN wants Joe Rogan off the podcast because they don't like how his dick tastes like Rogan's dick tastes bitter to them. It's not good. We don't like it. We hate how Rogan's dick tastes. And if we can't get him off the air, all we're going to do for the rest of our life is just eat Rogan's dick all the way down our throat. <laughs> I don't like it. He's like, you're going to eat it because I get 26 times the viewers that you do. 26 times the viewers that you do. And you know what that is? That's my proverbial dick right down your throat. I don't know, man. I'm sorry, dude. I washed it and everything, and it still tastes so bad to you that you're going to write this idiotic fucking article. I'm sorry. Boo. We accept the mainstream uh, of form of... What? We, ex we accept the mainstream of a form of political violence that's as dangerous as the January 6th attack. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped a paragraph. A really important one. But once we allow a white public figure to repeatedly use the foulest racial epithet in the English language without experiencing any form of punishment, we become a different country. We accept the mainstreaming of a form of political violence that's as dangerous as the January 6th attack. Now, that's not a huge stretch. Like, that's not an enormous stretch. So if a person who used the N-word does not have severe consequences, that's as dangerous as a big group of people storming the Capitol. That's, I mean, that's a big stretch, especially given that Joe Rogan didn't use the racial slur, right? He said the word out loud, discussing the word, but that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Moron. Uh, some might say that comparing a podcaster's moronic musings about race to January 6th is hyperbole. Yeah, I would say that. Actually, I wouldn't even say it's hyperbole. I would say it's fucking idiotic. They will invoke cancel culture and political correctness. No, nope, I would just uh, invoke dishonest, stupid asshole doing whatever these fuckheads told him to do for a very minimal amount of money. I would, ima I would imagine this guy makes little to no money, like almost none. Like I bet you this guy is so broke, it's fucking embarrassing. And he's doing this anyway because he has dreams and aspirations of being a big time journalist. This guy got, probably got paid 500 bucks for this article. The man apologized, they will say, and he did. He called his comments the most regretful and shameful thing, adding, I know that most people, there's no, to most people, there's no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word, never mind pub publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that. Rogan said after a video showing him using the N word more than 20 times in different episodes. Context. Context. Uh, Rogan has also apologized for a video of him comparing the, a gathering of black people to Planet of the Apes. He has said he is not racist, quote unquote. So that's the one thing that they have on him was that he said he went to see a movie in a really ghetto part of town and it was like Planet of the Apes. Eh, that's, that's uh, you know, that's a borderline racist comment for sure. A stupid comment that he said 13 fucking years ago. You know, they said 13 years ago and he's a comedian. He's a comedian talking to his friends and there was basically no one watching his podcast then. The fact that they even found it is impressive. So that's all you got on him was one Planet of the Apes comment and that was 13 years ago, and there was no one watching his show. He was literally talking to three of his friends. So, yeah, he apologized. But he apologized, like they said. In the past, white public figures who used the N-word provoked universal and unqualified condemnation. But Rogan has gotten some support. 
chief executive of Spotify, blah, 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 Spotify defended him. Also, Rogan didn't say it on Spotify. He didn't say it on Spotify. He didn't say it on Spotify, you fucking idiot. He said it eight years ago at the earliest when he wasn't on Spotify. So why are you talking about fucking Spotify? Why would he get deep platform from Spotify when he didn't fucking say it on Spotify? You fucking idiot. Um, blah, 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 blah. Another media mogul offered Rogan a lucrative gig. The chief executive of another social media office uh, company offered Rogan a hundred million to bring his podcast to the platform, citing Rogan's legion of fans and desire for real conversation. And former president Donald Trump told Rogan he should stop apologizing for his controversies, including the racial slurs and spreading COVID-19 misinformation, misinformation, of course, uh, because he shouldn't allow critics to make him look weak and frightened. Ooh. Well, I mean, I actually, whatever. Uh, I actually agree you shouldn't apologize because they'll just take your genuine apologies and use it against you as if you actually said the N-word as a racial slur. Uh, here we go, though. Rogan's use of the N-word could even boost his career if it follows the trajectory of another white entertainer, country music star Morgan Wallen. Wallen's career seemed finished a year ago after he was caught on video using the N-word in a conversation with a friend. Radio stations and streaming services dropped him from their playlists. The Academy of Country Music declared him ineligible for 2021 ACM Awards. Wallen apologized but was li widely condemned. And that was great for us because we love seeing people get their lives destroyed. By the way, I don't believe you. I, like... Maybe he said it, maybe he didn't. I don't care. I don't believe anything you say. He could have said, like, you have already nuked your credibility with me. So whether Wallen said it or not, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you, okay? Like, I don't believe anything they say. Nothing. There's nothing they can say that I would believe. It sounds like he probably said something bad because everyone condemned it. So bad on you, Wallen. He apologized. And then guess what? Oh, now he's doing well. And so we hate that. That's, that's the rest of the Now he's doing really well and we hate that. And so I guess it's probably going to boost Rogan's career. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a direct one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Either that or it's going to boast Rogan's career because every person who actually watches his podcast knows that he's not racist. And so all you're doing is building his profile. And then so other people who don't know who he is are going to be like, well, man, you guys are talking about this guy a lot. Maybe I'll go watch one of his episodes because I'm not a mindless fucking drone that just listens to whatever these lying fucks at CNN say. And then they'll go watch his podcast and go, oh, he's cool. Like he's like cool and he's really smart. This is not a racist person. This is not a person who's out to spread COVID misinformation. What the fuck are they talking about? Oh my God, we actually just increased his viewership because we don't even understand how the world actually works. Like we don't even know why people like Rogan because we're a bunch of robot drones that don't understand human interaction. So we put on our suit and we just say what the people want us to say. We don't understand why everyone hates us. We just say lies. They told us to say that. They told us to say that. I mean, they told us to say that. Fuck you. Okay. Uh... Rolling Stone, Jesus, Rolling Stone published an article. Rolling Stone said that Eric, uh, Eric Clapton was spreading misinformation because he said after his second uh, or his, after his B-O-O-S-T-E-R, he couldn't use his hands for three weeks. That's what he said. He said he couldn't use his own hands for three weeks. That's all he said. And then he's spreading misinformation. Really? You know whether he could use his hands or not? Why would he make that up? What possible reason would he have to make that up? You know? But Rolling Stone came to the rescue. Miss it. He's a bad person. He's an anti Shut the fuck up, man. For decades, life would never go on as normal for a white person caught using the N-word. This represents a momentous shift in American culture. Oh, does it? Either that or everyone knows Rogan, and so they know he didn't mean anything racist by it. Maybe. Uh... There used to be a consensus that any white person caught using the N-word or any other racial slurs would pay a, a hefty price. Not that long ago, many did. 2018, Roseanne Barr had her popular sitcom canceled after she made a series of racist tweets. That's because she made racist tweets. She didn't say the N-word, quoting rap lyrics. Uh, the same year, a top executive resigned from Netflix using the N-word in front of black employees. Although that one I did hear, he just said out of context and wasn't saying anything racist at all. And they just uprose on him because people are fucking crazy, right? Like, because people are crazy. If a person says, if, if a person says the N word is a destructive word in the English language, the word N word is a very destructive word. And then people go, <gasps> get him out. Like if I heard a guy say that, I would be like, Ooh, I don't even think you should say it out loud like that because people are fucking crazy. But then when people actually go, man, 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 I go, man, I told you they're crazy. I don't go like, wow, I agree with them. I go, people are crazy. Like I told you people are crazy. You shouldn't have said it, dude. People are crazy. They're all being totally dishonest. Like this is a completely dishonest reaction. 
They know. They're just, there is a, there is much less racism than, than the demand for racism. Like, we need it. You said it? Got him. Got one. Got one. Got one. Let's kill him. Let's bury him. Let's destroy his life. Uh, the career of Michael Richards from Seinfeld uh, cratered after he was caught calling hecklers the N-word in 2006. Right. Because that was super racist. He said racist things with the N-word, which is why he's never come back. That was a death sentence to his career, as it would be for anyone who used the word that way. Right? Fucking idiots. The prohibition against white people using racist language in public was so severe that a person could eat, could see their career destroyed even if they used a racial slur that most people didn't comprehend. George Allen was a popular U.S. senator uh, who seemed to be cruising to re-election in Virginia in 2006 when he filmed... He, when he was filmed using the word macaca, a type of monkey, to describe an Indian American volunteer with the campaign of his opponent, he lost his reelection did bid after both Republicans and Democrats criticized him. His political career never recovered. Right, because that's super racist. Using the N-word became a rhetorical red line because it represents arguably the most shameful part of U.S. history, slavery and the Jim Crow era. What does that have to do with Rogan, dude? Like, what does that have to do with Rogan? Neil Lester, an Arizona State University English professor who has taught a course on the N-word, noted that it has been described as the most toxic in the English language, a term almost magical in its negative power, and a slur that occupies a place in the soul where logic and reason never go. The word is inextricably linked with violence and brutality on black psyches and derogatory is aspirations of the cast on black bodies he said in an interview no degree of appropriating can rid rid it of that blood soaked history okay so what if that guy used the word to describe it that way these same people would try to get him canceled right idiots um i i literally i can't like i i this is so stupid i can't man the N-word became forbidden in the U.S. public sphere around the mid-20th century when a consensus emerged that public racism was sabotaging democracy, some academics said. But in the decades before that, white entertainers like and politicians talked like Rogan all the talked like Rogan all the time. Really. Unbelievable, dude. You fucking dishonest cocksucker. World War II helped change that. The war against Nazism and revelations about the Holocaust raised awareness of racism, while America's new role as a leader of the free world caused white elites to see racism as the nation's Achilles heel, wrote Robert L. Fleege. Oh, my God. He didn't say anything racist, you fucking morons. Oh, my God. He actually said this. Bilbo, a U.S. senator from Mississippi, felt free enough to tell white supporters during an election campaign in 1946, I call on every red-blooded white man to use any means to keep these N-bombs away from the polls. You actually used that example in this conversation about Joe Rogan reading rap lyrics. Bro, I just did a video about how fucked up it is to tell Michael Bisbee to go jump off a bridge. But seriously, dude, go jump off a fucking bridge. Do the world a favor. Seriously, take a poll on Twitter. How many of you guys read this article and you guys think this makes perfect sense? And this is something that, you know, these are the kinds of ideas we should perpetuate. Get them all together and jump off a bridge collectively. A bridge that's really, really fucking high that you have no chance of surviving. Do that. 